Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Manny Maradiege, today. I have a good show planned for you guys today, live on today, May the 9th. What is making noise around the NFL? And starting with some of the stories I have planned out for you guys today, we're going to be talking about the NFL strength of schedule, which teams have the hardest schedules coming up, and which teams find themselves on the tougher end of the stick. Then later on on the show, we'll go over some of the intricacies of the Green Bay Packers running back room and what that is shaping out to look like in 2024 as well as looking at the city of St. Louis, Missouri, how a how they are looking primed to have another NFL team potentially call St. Louis home. I'll tell you more details on that later on in the show. That is all coming up on today's episode, so make sure to like, follow and subscribe to the GSMC Chip Shot Football podcast. And without further ado, I mentioned the strength of schedule around the NFL. The NFL will officially release their schedule in about six days from now, Wednesday, May the 15th. However, we do know the opponents and the strength of schedule. We don't know which order they'll be played in, who will play who on which day, what week of the NFL season, but you can at least paint a picture of how hard this road to the playoffs, this road to a potential Super Bowl for some of these teams could be, no matter how it all pans out to be in which order. Uh, Looking at it, looking up some of the numbers behind everything, the biggest consensus I got was the AFC North, one of the toughest divisions already in 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 itself, talking about the Browns, the Bengals, the Ravens, and the Steelers. The Browns, the Ravens, and the Steelers all have the three toughest schedules in the entire NFL, whereas the Bengals come in as the 16th hardest schedule in the NFL. So a big discrepancy there. I'll start off with the Browns looking at their schedule. They have the hardest schedule in the NFL. They have an opponent combined win percentage of 55%, I want to say, or over that 50 um, mark of their record. So... All of their opponents combined, based on last year's records, have at least better than a 500 record in 2023. So that already is painting a tougher picture for the Cleveland Browns. They are trying to make it back to the playoffs for a second consecutive time here. The only time they ever did that in back-to-back years was in 1989. And this entire schedule, looking at their opponents, it includes 12 games versus teams with a winning record going back to the opponent combined win percentage that's tied for the most in the NFL no other team plays more than 12 games against teams that had a had an above 500 record so that's something um, to keep an eye out as well and also they're going to be facing five out of the eight teams that made the playoffs last year as well talking about the Steelers the Ravens in their division the Chiefs the Dolphins and the Dallas Cowboys will all be on the Cleveland Browns schedule And that's just fascinating to look at, depending on the home and away games with the Chiefs, the Dolphins, and the Ravens, how it all pans out. Overall, it's the hardest schedule on paper on how people judge the uh, combined win percentages and their opponents. You usually expect those teams that I mentioned to continue on their path to being relevant and being consistently good. So the Cleveland Browns have definitely a tougher road to prosperity than others, but they have the team to do it. How Deshaun Watson kind of combats all of that, trying to make himself fit back into this team will be something to watch out for. But Cleveland has the hardest schedule on paper. And on the other end of the spectrum, we have the Atlanta Falcons and the New Orleans Saints with the tied easiest schedule on paper their combined opponent win percentage is only 45 percent just under that 500 mark but those two have the easiest schedules on paper only two team they're the only two teams to have their opponent win percentage under 465 or under 0.465 and with that division looking at it the whole nfc south it's not entirely too out of the realm of you know understanding this all um all the afc south is pretty much in the top five easiest schedules on paper i don't know in which order actually i do know the 
the order. You have the Falcons, the Saints, the Bucks, and the Panthers all in the top five easiest schedules in the NFL. The Bucks have the fifth easiest, the Panthers have the fourth e easiest, and the Saints and the Falcons are tied for first with the easiest schedule um, on paper. Again, that division wasn't very good. You know, the, the Panthers... Um, had the season that they had with Bryce Young. Then you look at someone like the Bucks, who made the playoffs, but also trying to keep it all relatively similar in that division. You can't give the Bucks just one of the hardest ones just because they played very well last year. It all that all sort of plays into this equation that makes up who you're playing in the NFL regular season. So the Bucks kind of got a bit fortunate there to be in the top five easiest schedules to continue on the success that they had from last year. And then the Saints and the Falcons. The Falcons coming off of a pretty disappointing season based on their quarterback play. You'd expect that to be tremendously better. So they could also be another team that benefits of an easier schedule to make a playoff push there. And the Saints as well, they were all right. They were good in some games, pretty poor in other games. You don't really know what to expect with this roster makeup and how they handle their salary cap. But they do have the benefit of the doubt with an easier schedule. Going back up to the top, though, to the harder teams, the Baltimore Ravens have the second hardest schedule in the NFL. They're just under the combined win percentage of the Cleveland Browns. Theirs is .536. They're the only team, them and the Cleveland Browns, who have an opponent win percentage above that 535 mark, like I mentioned before. And their road games are what makes this even more challenging for the Baltimore Ravens. They're going to face a flurry of teams on the road that are probably some of the best in the NFL. The Steelers, I won't say that they're the best, but in that division, you know what I'm um, trying to say. The Bengals are on the road, the Chiefs on the road, the Texans on the road, and the Dallas Cowboys and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers all had winning records in 2023, and the Ravens will have to all travel to all of these teams at some point in 2024. So that, again, paints a tougher picture with bringing in Derrick Henry, how the wide receiver room shapes out, how does Lamar play off of another great season, getting to the AFC Championship game, how do they rebound now with this, and just some other nuggets around the NFL schedule and the strength of schedule. Looking at a team like the Chicago Bears, I thought it was interesting to point out that all of, the, all of their team has pretty much been shaken up and they're pretty much introducing a whole new group of players. Keenan Allen, DeAndre Swift, Roma Dunze, uh, Caleb Williams, obviously, DJ Moore, all these guys that now really flipped this offense on his head. They have the easiest schedule among the teams that finished last in their division. They have the 29th hardest or the uh, fourth easiest schedule, whichever way you want to look at it, in the NFL. So that's something to keep an eye on as well because for a younger team trying to fit all these pieces in together, a rookie quarterback, to have an easy schedule is very fortunate for them. And it'll give them some confidence, some good momentum. It, even if this season doesn't pan out the way they want to, I'm pretty confident that they could do some great things with the 29th hardest schedule in the NFL, and that will set a good foundation going forward for this long-term project that they're trying to build. And another thing to look at, I mentioned the Cincinnati Bengals have the 16th hardest schedule in the NFL, while the rest of the teams in their division in the AFC South have the top three hardest. Them trying to rebound off of Joe Burrow getting injured and coming off of a 9-8 and eight season, having that sort of easy schedule for them, look to them, to maybe have one of the best records in the AFC. I know that's a maybe a bold thing to say now in just the beginning of May, but I think that plays a big part in it because they have the talent level that they have and the rest of the teams in their division have to face a harder schedule. I think they've got a big break here with the way that their opponents have been laid out, so keep an eye out on them for the rest of that season and how it pans out. And also looking at another team, Jim Harbaugh, the Los Angeles Chargers, they have the easiest schedule in the AFC. So again, similarly to the Chicago Bears, a team that's trying to get their legs up under them, trying to establish some sort of identity, president, style, culture um, in the NFL with this new management coming in. I think that's a big benefit for them. I 
still wouldn't say they have a winning record just because there's a lot of unknown factors, but I can see a lot of positives coming off of them having such an easier schedule compared to everybody in the AFC. That could certainly benefit them to continue on this long-term project. I have all the confidence in the world in Jim Harbaugh. How this all pans out, injuries and other uncontrollable factors, we'll just have to see how it does finally lay out come December, January, but that's something also to keep in mind when you're looking at the Chargers' final record at the end of the regular season. But that's pretty much all from the strength of schedule. Again, I'll remind everyone that the official scheduled release will be on May the 15th in less than a week's time now, so keep an eye out on that. But in the meantime now, we will move on with the rest of the show. We're going to take a quick break right now, and on the other side of that, we're going to talk about Netflix and the NFL partnership that I think is starting to gain some traction here. I'll give you guys more details on that, as well as talking about the Tyler Boyd signing with the Tennessee Titans, giving a big overview of the AFC South and how they, how all those teams stack up against each other. All of that is coming up in just a few seconds. You're listening to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. Thank you. 